Yo, we gotta talk about these tomatoes here behind me. It's been a good late spring, early summer for tomatoes down here in South Georgia. Temperatures have stayed relatively cool, although it's starting to you know, warm up and get toasty now. We haven't had a whole lot of rain, which is good for tomatoes. We can feed them right through that drip tape there. And so I've got one of the better looking tomato crops I've had in quite a few years. I wanna show you what they all look like. We're gonna talk about the different varieties, which ones seem to be doing better than others and kind of what we've done to get to this point. So here's our tomato jungle right here. We've got six rows in here, all different kinds, mostly determinate hybrid varieties, but we've got some heirloom varieties here on the end and uh, some indeterminate cherry types. And uh, almost all these are at least four foot tall, some of them six foot tall, some of them getting on up to eight or nine foot tall there in the back. Now, the bigger tomatoes, the kind of beefsteak type, we haven't harvested any of those yet. They're loaded down as I'll show you in a minute here but uh, haven't quite started turning yet. Some of the cherry tomatoes in the back there, we have harvested a few little handfuls of those so far. So the plants so far are looking really, really good. And um, like I said, we haven't had much rain, so we haven't had a lot of weed pressure here in the middles, which has been nice. Haven't had to fight the weeds much, just been able to feed them and fertilize them through that drip tape there. So if you haven't been following along since the beginning, since we planted these guys back in early spring, our goal this year was to kind of emulate what my dad does with his tomatoes. He always grows a really good crop of tomatoes. And so I wanted to kind of just copy what he does and see if it works just as well out here in my gardens. In doing that, the first main thing we changed from past years is we didn't prune them at all. I used to prune some of those bottom limbs there, especially when I was doing my first line of string for the trellising. This year I didn't do that at all. I haven't pruned them any and we just let them grow, kind of maximize the foliage we get. And the goal there is to have big healthy plants so we can get big nice tomatoes. The other thing we did different this year is that we were a little more aggressive with our fertilizing program or our fertilizing schedule. So just as soon as I transplanted these guys and I could tell they started growing, they had kind of overcome their transplant shock, I put them on a fertilizer program every two weeks. So one week I would fertilize them with our 20-20-20 plus our micro boost. The next two weeks or two weeks later i would uh fertilize them with our calcium nitrate and i've just been alternating back and forth between those two now i haven't fertilized them in about three weeks or so i kind of cut off the fertilizer because the plants were getting pretty big they look nice and green and uh, they started setting fruits so i haven't gave them any in a while but when they were small and when i was trying to kind of maximize that growth and foliage i was hitting them pretty hard every two weeks with the fertilizer and that seems to have worked pretty well so far. Now for our trellising or our support, we use a technique called the Florida weave and we did a video earlier this year showing how we kind of get that started on these plants right here. And I've just been continually running the string. So we've got the stakes, these wooden stakes here that are four foot tall. We've got them located every two plants here and let's see if you can see this right here. So we start off with a uh, run of string there, kind of about five inches from the ground. And as they grow, we just keep adding more string to keep supporting these plants. And I think on these Bella Roses here, I've got four lines of string ran, and I'll probably need to run one more line of string right at the top of those stakes before it's all over with. Some of these other varieties that are taller let me show you over here like these red snappers i've got more lines of string on those because the plants on those seem to get a lot taller than the bella roses do so we've got one two three four five six lines of string on those now all these lines except the top one 
is where we did that weaving technique where we're weaving in and out of the plants. Now, when it got to the top here on these taller plants, it got more difficult to weave in and out of them because it was hard to tell which limbs belong to which plant. It's all kind of running together there. So what I did was I kind of just did this wrap around technique. So I just wrapped around both plants, wrapped around the post, then just did two plants at a time there and then came back along the other side and wrapped around that way. And that seems to work fine just as long as you do it on that top strand there or that second strand from the top. Once the, the foliage gets nice and big like that, those plants are kind of going to lean each other um, from left to right there. So we don't have to worry about them falling in that direction. We just don't want them falling, you know, over this way or over this way. So we keep them wrapped up nice and tight there along the row. Also makes it easier to get in here and harvest and just keep everything nice and clean. Now with these indeterminate varieties on this last row here, we didn't use wooden stakes. We know these indeterminate varieties are gonna get taller, so we needed taller stakes, so we used T-posts here. And I think these are six foot tall T-posts I used here. As so we did the Florida weave for the most part, we had to kind of start doing that wrap around technique here as we got towards the top. Now you can see these real tall ones over here, which I'll tell you more about in just a minute. I have ran out of stake here. I guess I could have used some even taller t post but um, they've kind of outgrown uh, the trellis as tall as I can get it. And so they grow anymore, they'll just kind of have to lean over or do whatever we might can come in there and trim them and keep them cleaned up or something. But uh, we've weaved these all the way to the top of these t posts and it's holding the plants well, as you can see, everything looks kind of nice and neat there. But um, these things just keep growing and growing and growing. Okay, so now let's look at the individual varieties we planted. We got, I think, at least 10 varieties planted out here. So let's look at all those varieties, see how they're performing compared to one another. If you watch our channel a lot, you know we do a lot of trials around here. So we want to compare varieties when we've given them the same treatment and been under the same conditions. So all these tomatoes here have been given the same fertilizer, all the same treatments, and we kind of want to see how they perform differently. You know, just because a plant's taller doesn't mean it's more productive. Some of these may have an earlier fruit set. Some of them may have a later fruit set. Some may be bigger than others. And we just want to kind of be able to notate that so we can know that going forward and be able to help you guys and tell you the main differences between all these varieties. So on row number one here, and all these rows are probably 35, 40 foot long, something like that. Row number one here, we've got our tried and true Bella Rosa hybrid tomato. Tomato with good disease resistance. We've been growing this longer than any of these other varieties out here. It always performs well for us. And we can see there, we've got some nice fruits on there. Starting to load up. Now, these plants here, of all the kind of hybrid disease resistant varieties we grew, are the smallest plants. Like I said earlier, that doesn't always mean that the production is gonna be lower. They just don't seem to get as tall as some of the varieties I'll show you in a minute. But every single one of these plants have made it. It's not unusual, as I'll show you in a minute, to, that we lose a plant here and there, one or two. But all of these guys have made it, looking nice and healthy. And uh, that Bella Rosa just always seems to do the trick for us. Look at those guys right there. That's gonna be some good eating right there. Now on our second row here, we've got a variety that we grew last year. So this is our second year growing it. And this variety here is called Brickyard. Now this one here has a few more diseases that it is resistant to than the Bella Rosa. And the plants seem to be a little more vigorous. Uh, they, they just grow a little taller, grow a little bit bigger. And the other thing I noticed is that some of the tomatoes look to be a little larger. So you can look in there at those guys. Those are some pretty decent size tomatoes right there. So um, it's hard to tell currently because uh, 
you know the bell roses haven't completely matured out but it looks like this may make a little bigger tomato here definitely makes a taller plant uh i can't say that the fruit set you know that there's more fruits on here it's just that the fruits look a little bit bigger on these guys and um they're a lot of them are you know six feet or a foot above that four foot stake there so this is a really really good variety for down here in the south and uh performed just as good this year as it did last year so we're seeing some really good consistency out of it and definitely going to be a keeper for years to come if we come down here to the other end we can see a little bit better this third variety here is a variety called summer pick it's another hybrid with really good disease resistance first year we've ever grown these and i would say that's hard to tell some of these are similar in height to the brickyard some of them are a little bit shorter but uh so far everything looks good with these guys we did lose a few plants up here towards the front i have no idea what caused that but all the rest of the plants look really healthy you can see that guy right there we lost that one but besides that these things are loaded up pretty good and um, we got four or five right in there nice big cluster right in there and um, i'm very happy with the summer pick variety uh, for the be the first year growing it seems like it handles this southern climate really well and uh, besides losing those two just randomly haven't noticed any disease issues um, on any of the rest of these here and uh, I, I think this will be a keeper as well we'll have to see how well it tastes uh, because if it doesn't taste good then that's a whole different story but as far as the plant growth and the fruit production uh, I'm, I'm good with this one right here growing it in future years and on these next two rows here we've got four varieties among these two rows so we kind of split the rows in half just so we could trial a few more varieties and the most impressive variety i would have to say so far is this one here called red snapper just nice big healthy plants loaded down with some massive looking tomatoes look at that guy right there that's a big old nice sandwich tomato right there just waiting to get ready so the red snapper uh which has a great disease package even resistant to nematodes i believe is is probably the one that i've been the most impressed with so far and um, i've been talking to some other growers and breeders who are familiar with this variety and they said it's been impressing people all over the country although, although it's a really new variety you know people haven't been growing it for long but a lot of people have been really impressed with it myself included on the second half of this row where we got the red snappers we've got this celebration variety here which is an improved variety from the celebrity that's so popular and these plants are pretty tall here um, i'm getting a little inconsistency with these guys some of them look really really good some of them not as much and it's probably because they just don't have quite the disease package they have a little bit of resistance but not quite the disease package as some of these others do and it's just tough growing tomatoes down here y'all in this humidity but on these that are setting fruit and stuff they are they have like a really concentrated fruit set you get a ton of tomatoes in a little small space look at there i mean those things are just loaded down in there and i don't know how big they're going to get uh, but man there's lots of clusters in there there's probably 20 tomatoes in just a little small space right there so jury's still out a little bit on this celebration variety but uh if we get production like that right there that's nothing to complain about at all over here is one called homestead now this is a determinate what kind of heirloom variety um, i think it originated in florida and it's supposed to be really really heat tolerant and these plants are huge for a determinate tomato i've never seen a determinate tomato get this tall these things are as tall as I am in some spots, six foot tall. Now the fruit set on these hasn't been overwhelming so far. It's been, well, I'll say, let's give them a fair shot. I'll say it's been a lot later. So it's been delayed. 
And I don't know if it's because they're so heat tolerant and they want to wait till it gets hotter to set the fruit. Maybe that's the case. These things grew a lot more plant and they're just now starting to put on fruit. You know, like you see right here. Whereas those others already putting on a ton of fruit and didn't get near this tall. So some interesting differences there between some of those hybrid disease resistant varieties versus this heirloom here in the homestead. And then down here, this is another new one that I have been really, really impressed with. This is a determinate Roma type tomato called Tachi. And you can see the shape of those tomatoes look like a traditional Roma tomato. And these puppies are just loaded, loaded down. I've grown plenty of the traditional Romas before and I've grown the Amish Pace last year, so I've kind of have a baseline to compare them to, but none of them have been as productive or have shown the productivity so far as these Tachis have. Just big clusters of those nice looking paste tomatoes there. I can't wait to try these guys, but um, I've never seen this kind of production out of a paste tomato. And it could have a lot to do with the fact that they are a determinate variety, so they're gonna have a lot more concentrated fruit set than an indeterminate type like the Amish paste, which is gonna grow longer, but not have all these fruits on here at one time like this, just loaded down like these guys are. And on our last row here, we've got more of our specialty tomato types. And I planted these on this row for a reason. They will catch a little bit of shade from that tree line there. Some of these aren't gonna be as heat tolerant as some of these other varieties out here in the full sun. So I planted them over here just to give them a little break every now and then. And um, let's see what we got here. This first one is called Black Crim. We got a nice looking right there. So this is, has that kind of traditional bumpy looking heirloom tomato shape. And uh, we don't expect as much productivity from these guys as those ones over there. We kind of know what to expect. And we don't expect as much disease resistance. If we come out here tomorrow and the virus has got them, then so be it. That's why we don't grow a ton of them, but they are fun to grow because they have some neat colors and shapes and interesting flavors. The second one we got here is called Chef's Choice Orange. And these have some decent productivity so far. Those are loaded up pretty good there. And this get like a, a yellow to orangish color. It's supposed to be really, really tasty tomato. You can see one of the plants there isn't looking so hot, but those other two are looking pretty good so far. And then we've got all our cherry varieties, which are these real tall ones here. The first variety we've got is called Sweetie. And these things are loading up pretty good. They haven't started turning red yet, but they should any day now. So we'll start harvesting some of those guys. And then down here, our favorite cherry variety probably is the Sun Gold variety here. You can see they load up in those little clusters like that. We've got some of them ready down here to pick. I need to pick these they get that kind of orange color nice citrusy taste the only thing is these guys will split on you if you don't keep them picked or if they get too much water so you got to come out here and pick them on a regular basis but uh this is one of the most tasty tomato varieties there is and all these cherry varieties look really good they're just getting so tall they're just gonna have to fall over like this guy is right here i'm gonna have to trim them up one i don't have any taller sticks or stakes than that. So from all the varieties we planted, I can't say that I have any that I would call stinkers, ones that I just absolutely would not grow again at this point. Now, once we taste them, we may change our mind a little bit, but all these varieties so far, I'm happy with. Like I showed you, some of them do seem to make bigger fruits. Some of them do have a later fruit set. Some of them, the plant height is quite variable you know, from one variety to the next. But, you know, that's why we like to grow so many so we can compare them, we can show you guys, and then you can decide for yourself which ones you wanna grow. And as we showed you there, as we were looking at all those varieties, almost all of them are kinda maxed out on the stakes or the, the trellis that I'm using there. So that's why I kind of cut the fertilizer off to them. The plants were looking nice and green. I really don't need them to get any taller 
because then I can't really do anything with them. Most of the time, determinate tomatoes are only going to get about four foot tall, but some of these other varieties have been quite surprising how tall they're getting. Now, that could be a function of my fertilizer program, but you know, some of them just seem to like you know, to get on up there about five or six foot tall. That's fine. We'll just know to plan ahead for that in the future. So I hope you enjoyed that little tour there comparing all of our tomato varieties we have growing. And we'll be sure to keep you guys updated once these things start, you know, turning color, start getting ready. We can do some taste tests and kind of compare the flavor among all of them to see which ones taste the best. So for all you gardeners watching out there, I'd love to know how your tomato plants are doing. I know I've seen some pictures on our row by row group on Facebook. Some of you are already harvesting tomatoes, already enjoying some of those nice, delicious tomato sandwiches. And if you're growing some varieties this year you've never grown before, some new varieties to you, let me know which ones have really impressed you so far, or maybe which ones haven't impressed you so far. I love to hear how your gardens are going and how your tomato plants are looking right now. I'll put some links below to all the tomato varieties we talked about in this video. If you enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this video, check out these other two right here. Videos we did earlier this year when we were planting and starting to trellis these tomatoes behind me. We'll see you next time.